This video is sponsored by some mild flooding. So I put out on Instagram a couple of weeks ago a question, what do you want to see from me? Now one of the things that came back was, what's in your camera bags? So that's what this video is. Um, to anyone who also asked a question, your video is coming, it's just not this one. It will eventually come out, trust me. So this is what we're going to do. I have the camera here, I've got my phone, which I'm going to use as a kind of close-up angle. And um, we're going to just go through what's in my camera bags. I might just, you know, just show you, then just put it away. Uh, some things I might talk about if I feel like there's something to talk about or just something I want to talk about. But yeah, so let's start off with camera bag number one. Oh, here we go. Okay. This is a big old boy. Ain't no meaning, no harm. So this is a hammer camera bag. It came with the camera that is inside of it. It's a proper nice big bag, this. Personally, I wouldn't use it for skateboarding, uh, maybe for like interviews and stuff, because it's nice and big, proper and rugged, nice build quality as well. But if you're like out and about skateboarding, I wouldn't suggest this. It's really big, it's really heavy. It's really meant to be put on trains, put in cars, stuff like that. Right, so inside we have a Rode NTG1 microphone. Now this, is probably one of the best investments you can make, especially if you're gonna be shooting HD. So get yourself an, an NTG1 or an ASDEN or an Audio Technica. Get yourself a nice, decent XLR, XLR, XLR. So yeah, just make sure you get yourself a nice, decent XLR microphone. Any of them will do. Uh, I prefer the NTG1 because it doesn't need batteries. Sounds pretty good. It's built like a tank and it just works, you know. You've got 48 Phantom going into it and it just works with the cameras. I've also got a, an official Rode Dead Cat, which fucking stings and needs a brush. Kind of looks like my hair in the morning if I don't have a shower. Uh, what else have we got? A crappy little Panasonic battery, which does not hold a charge. We have a whole bunch of shit media. And what I mean by shit media is P2 cards. XLR lead, just a no-name brand. Uh, I know some people say that you should get like properly high quality ones, but actually this is one that my dad threw together. Or was it? No, my old one was one that my dad threw together. And that lasted around six years until it broke off in the camera. So this is a shock mount for the Rode NTG1. You just slot it in on the uh, cold shoe, put your microphone in there and you're good to go. If your camera doesn't come with one of these little microphone clamps, holders, whatever you want to do. Go on eBay, go on Amazon, get yourself one of these. They work way better than the ones that come on the cameras. Way, just, they're just so much better. And the nice thing about these is they have uh, threaded ends, so you can actually put this onto a boom pole, which is quite nice if you want to do proper filmmaking. A 52 to, 52 to 72 mil step up ring. This is for the VX1000. I don't really use it, so it just stays in here as storage. Oh, that's actually one thing I should mention. I don't necessarily um, keep everything in the bag at all times. Sometimes I'll go between different bags. Sometimes I'll take things out completely and stuff like that. It kind of mixes and matches. But at the moment, this is what stays in the bag. And then when I go out filming or whatever, I'll take bits and pieces out. I just wanted to clarify that. Like, I'm not going to take that out skating with me because that's completely pointless. Right, what else have we got? We have... Oh, a uh, lens without a lens cap. This is a Sony 58mm instead of 52mm for some reason. 58mm wide angle lens. Now this came with my VX1000. This is the official, well not official, but it's a, it's a proper Sony wide angle lens converter. It's not even that wide, but it, it gives you that kind of 90s kind of shitty vignette, which some people like, so good for them. Does anyone want this? I don't really have much of a use for it, I don't think. It's nice, it's got a little white balance lens cap as well, so you can just point it at the light and there you go. Now this is a big old bitch. So this is a Schneider Optics slash Century Optics wide angle converter lens for the HVX and the HVX 200A. You can get these for dirt cheap. And if you have an original 
H3X200, I highly recommend getting one of these, um, especially if you're gonna be filming indoors or you're just using your H3X as a second angle. Although I will, I will say, I am kind of worried about having this on the camera for very long because this thing alone weighs a ton. So if you whack one of these on the front of your H3X, it's just gonna really weigh the sh it's just, it weighs a crap ton. Right, let's move on to the main piece. Here we have the, <laughs> the underside of the, no, joking. So this is the H3X200, of course. One of the most influential cameras in skateboarding and in indie filmmaking. For skateboarding anyway, it would be the VX, then this, in my opinion. I fucking adore this camera. The way it looks, you know, how it films, the quality of it. It's just kind of just above standard def, you know? but it still looks pretty nice. I just, I love this camera to death. And it weighs a bit, you know, but to me, this is the go-to camera. I love this thing to death. And I got it for like pretty much next to nothing. Uh, I, oh shit, it's a really nice camera. However, I do have some issues with this one in particular. The XLR port here, uh, the pin, as you can see, the push pin to release the XLR microphone is broken. And I found out the hard way when my cable got stuck in. So uh, yeah, that kind of sucks, but you can fix them quite easily. Some known issues with this is that sometimes they'll just die. Yeah, it's a weird one. Apparently, if you turn the camera off and you remove the battery immediately, and this actually applies to all Panasonics, it, will, it can just kill the camera. It just does something, it just short circuits and then that's it, it fries. Even back when I first got my DVX, when I learned about this, I would turn the camera off, wait a couple of seconds, take the battery out. And I think that is one of the main reasons that these things fry. Let's look at the media we have in the back. I have a 64 gig E-series card and a 32 gig as well. That gives me about 104 minutes of 72060 recording which is plenty it's more than enough right so i'm going to pop all this shit back sounded like santa for a second uh, pop all this stuff back and then we're going to move on to the next camera Oosh. i can't believe i had hdr on i, I can't, can't believe, believe you, you committed, committed suicide. suicide i cannot believe you committed suicide how could you have done this how could you have committed suicide so the next bag is the one that people are probably most excited to see. It's the VX1000. So let me just pull up my phone again. So this is just some no-name cheap bag. It came with the VX1000. Um, honestly, as soon as I can, I'm going to replace this bag. It's kind of it's old, nasty. It came with the it came with the camera, so it's at least 25 years old. Yeah, not great. Yeah, just crap quality. Yeah, this just seems like it's going to perish and break. Right, let's have a look on what's inside. So just as a standard AV cable, nothing special. So it also comes with the uh, VX1000 manual, very nice. You can get copies of that online. My Ghetto modded battery. It's a regular MPF, MPF 770, 750, 730. Yeah, it's basically the same size. However, due to the fact that the VX1000, uh, the battery actually goes inside of it and not just kind of on the back, it needed ridges on the side, as you can see. So I had to modify the utter shit out of it. I ended up buying three of these. I only modified two of them. Uh, the other two are actually not here. And even this still gets stuck in the camera, even with these horrific modifications to it. So I've had to put this little tab of tape at the back just so I can pull it out of the camera and not cry. More OG VX1000 batteries. These maybe hold like an hour, maybe an hour and a half on a good day. Got a whole bunch of them. So yeah, this is a video camera filter kit. It's actually quite a nice little pouch. Uh, just goes on your belt. And inside we have a Sony ND filter. So yeah, this is a ND8 52mm ND filter. Quite nice not really used it i mean if you wanted to do like long exposure kind of arty stuff then it might be helpful if you want to get those uh, low shutter speeds um but the pouch alone is actually very nice um if you're a drug dealer or one of the types that smokes the ganja uh this might be good for you it's kind of cool anyway then we have the at this point rather infamous or well, the famous one of the musses capca 52 mil fisheye that everyone kind of knows me for yeah basically the same thing as an Opteca 
good quality. Comes with a lens cloth and a little screwdriver to take the lens hood off. I think they're okay, especially if you've got two spacer rings. This came with a spacer ring, actually, uh, but I don't use it because it's not very good. That's the one thing I'd have to complain about. The gold eye cup for the VX viewfinder, viewfinder itself. And then the main thing itself, which is the VX 1000. That's right, we've got one. Yeah, we've got one and it's an eighth generation ship. Oh, and you may have noticed that I have some tape on here. Uh, that's Tadashi Grip, uh, T-Grip I should say. Um, this is not sponsored. A very important camera indeed. Um, oh fuck, it's still got the Sony sticker on it. Yeah, this is a beautiful camera. Some would say overrated, some would say it needs to die, some live by it and will die by it. Sounds amazing on, on it, of, of course, of course it sounds amazing. I don't really know what to say. Oh, this one's actually damaged. Uh, the viewfinder ribbon cable has gone and there seems to be an intermittent issue where you'll start recording and after about 20 minutes, um, you start getting like really trippy colors in the viewfinder. It doesn't affect the footage whatsoever. It is purely in the viewfinder. So either some capacitors have gone or it was just genuinely the cable going. So um, yeah, it, it still works. I just have to uh, keep it in the down position. Right, let's move on to the next bag. Oh, fuck me. Right, oh shit. This is a big old bag. So this is a petrol camera bag. Originally made for a DSLR, but uh, it fits cameras quite nice, uh, video cameras quite nicely. This thing is fucking huge. Shit. It's, it, can you even see me? <coughs> it's a big old boy. This is what I'd consider if you are going on tour. This thing has wheels, it has a handle that can pull out the back, and not only that, if you unzip this section here, uh, shoulder straps come out so you can actually wear it as a bag. Now it is fucking humongous, but you can do it, and for about two years I wore this on my back with all my camera equipment in it. Not a good, not the greatest idea I've ever had because my back is absolutely fucked now. But yeah, this is a, an, a beastly bag. It's huge, you can put your tripod in it, laptop, it's got enough room for absolutely everything. I bought this secondhand on eBay for about 100 and, no, it might have been about 80 to 100 pounds. I know these go for a little bit more, I believe. It wasn't in too bad of condition, but then again, I've had this since 2003. 14, 2013, around then. So I don't necessarily use this um, out and about as much as I used to. At this point, it's mainly just storage. But you know, there are some things in here, so I might as well show you what's inside of it. So we have <laughs> an original Opteca fisheye lens bag. We have this bloody Firestore FS100. So yeah, this is where it sits. Because I don't really like it very much. I think it's a bit of a piece of shit. If you want this, send me a message or something. I'll probably sell this at some point. We have the charger for it. We have some ultra rare <laughs> mini DV tapes. I've actually got two boxes of these at home, which came with a HVX actually, which was a really lucky find. Panasonic strap, DVX lens hood, and of course the DVX. Now I actually have two of these cameras. I love them to death. This was one of the first proper, one of the first proper professional camcorders I ever got. It's a beautiful standard def camera. You've got 60i, 30p, 24, or in PAL you've got 50i and 25p. You've got proper balanced XLR inputs there. It does Firewire, you can record into it through the, like through the AV cables. Manual lenses, yeah, you've got a ma proper manual zoom and focus proper audio control. It's just a beautiful, beautiful camera. Sound on it, it's pretty good. And of course, the scene files, as you can see there, which, which is, as you can see, Panasonic stuck with for a number of years, which means I can also make the image from all three of, well, actually all four of my Panasonic cameras match up really nicely. One of the reasons why I like this so much is just purely how fucking wide it is. Um, you whack a proper 72mm Optica on there, which by the way is the same, um, 
has the same kind of, it's as wide as the Sentry Optics one. So there's no need to worry about, oh, this one's not as wide as the upper. Both lenses are as wide as each other. So when you whack one of these on here, oh boy, it's really fucking wide. That's one of the other reasons why I like this, because unless you can afford like 1500 quid to get a, you know, an MK1 on a VX or a couple of grand to get an Xtreme on a HPX or a HVX, this will be, if you're looking for like, good quality, decent sound, and a really wide lens, get one of these bad boys. These are so underrated. They're dirt cheap. You can get them on eBay all the time in varying quality. This is the 100B. There's the 100, the 100A. This one has the better chip in it, better in low light. Yeah, it doesn't have the time-lapse feature like the 100A, I believe. Right, so now I'm gonna have to swap over to a different camera because the bag I'm gonna show you has this camera in it. So it'd be kind of weird to just show you an empty bag. So please excuse the fact that the image may change a little bit. Hopefully the sound will still be okay, which is the main thing. Right, I could do one of those really fucking cringy transitions, those fucking YouTube vloggers and shit do, you know, like, oh, like that. Or the click and it just kind of does that thing. Or, you know, the clap, but I won't do that. No, I won't do that, no. Ooh. Right, let's have a look at the last camera bag. So this is a Hwang camera bag. Got this off Amazon just before I went to Barcelona in 2015, I think it was. This is actually my kind of out and about filming bag. Um, it carries pretty much every camera. It can fit the H3X, but it's a little bit of a squeeze, but it carries a VX, DVX and HPX quite nicely. Not a very expensive bag, but you know, it's lasted so far and it's doing quite well. Let's have a look inside. Mask, we've got a, I'd say cheap, but it came from a Sony uh, PXW X70, I believe. I just use this as a little onboard microphone with this. It isn't as good as the NTG one, but it's shorter. It's all in one. Don't have to worry about cables and all that stuff. And it, you know, it works okay. We have a lens blower. Uh, this actually came in a kit off Wish. It came with this lens cloth and a lens pen, which is gone for all time. Uh, yeah, I think that lens cleaning kit cost me about four or five pounds. It was very cheap. Then we have a properly nice lens cloth here. I believe this is Leica. Carl's eyes, there we go. Camera batteries. Since I own four Panasonic cameras, they all came with nice big chunky batteries. Uh, there's another one in there, and I actually have one in the camera filming. I've just found the lens pen. Where is it? Here we go. Yeah, so this came with the lens cloth and the blower. It comes with a little brush, which is quite nice. And it came with a little rubber spudger thingy, but it broke off and I lost the cap, so it's kind of useless at that point. Uh, what else? Oh, of course, the... Uh, Opteca 72mm fisheye. As I said before, this is basically the same thing as the Kepka and the VX1000 Markets fisheye, the free CCD fisheye, uh, all basically every place that is selling their own fisheye that isn't an Opteca or isn't a Century Optics lens, it's gonna be one of these or a Kepka. It's basically the same thing. Very poorly done initial I did when I was like 14 with electrical tape and a CamCaddy sticker. If you remember CamCaddy, holy fucking shit. And of course, the uh, HPX 171. Now let me just move the bag a little bit out of the way. Yes, this is the 171. Now, if you're wondering what the difference between this and the 170 is, is that this can go between PAL and NTSC. Uh, so that means it can do 50p and 60p. That's why I got it, because my HPX is an NTSC camera. My DVX is an NTSC camera. <laughs> And my VX is PAL, so at least I can, you know, match some of the footage with this. I bought this from a production company in Italy. They were selling two of these, uh, and the pictures they included on the eBay listing were of one in really nice condition. Uh, I got this for about £700, maybe £800, which might be uh, a bit much, but I got it with a bunch of battery, a, a few batteries, a ton of P2 cards. Here's the thing. This one came broken, okay? I don't know if you can see that or not. The eyepiece, as you can see there, very damaged. Looks like it's either been broken, dropped, or burnt. 
and the P2 card door is fucked. It still goes, it just, you know, it still shuts, but it's not the same. Oh, and the, uh, for some reason, the lens, the focus ring, the rubber on it is deteriorating. So every time I use it, or if I actually want to change focus, I get bits of black rubber sticking to my fingers. Not very nice, but this is the improved version of that. It's got the new chip in it, better in low light, has a few more scene file settings, but other than that, basically the same camera, still does DVC Pro HD and all that propaganda. But yeah, that's all I have to really say about this camera. Not overly fond of it, if I'm perfectly honest, but it's good when I need it. Two things I forgot to add. Uh, one, is that there's actually another issue with this camera, which is the SD card slot above the P2 cards is, well, it's damaged. You use the SD card slot to transfer user files, scene files, stuff like that. And when I was uh, exchanging scene files, the card got stuck. So I had to claw it out with a pair of pliers, which was a pain in the ass. And the other thing I forgot to mention was the fact that I used two F-Series 64 gigabyte cards in the HPX. I picked these up off of eBay for about 200 or so pounds each. Each, I know, absurd. These are the fastest cards, the newest cards as well. Yeah. But yes, that is pretty much it. That is all my camera equipment. Well, hopefully this video has been somewhat enjoyable, maybe even informative. If you've got any comments about some of the things that I've shown today, feel free to comment below. But yeah, thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time.